you know, I didn't see anybody get hurt while I was there. But, uh, man, it wasn't the skating that scared me. It was just this group of guys with power tools. It was kind of janky. I got a call from Paul Sheik. He just told me about this book project that he had. Basically, the book um, is titled Diptych, which is two images juxtapositioned next to each other. And so the concept of the book is to flip through the top of the book and the bottom of the book to make up two separate books. And basically, he came up to me and was like, hey, I want to get skaters involved. I want you to be involved. They wanted to document having each of us put something together and basically skate it. I was going to use my school originally as the space that we were going to conduct the whole project in. As soon as I told them that there was going to be skateboards involved, they backed out. And he ended up getting a, a warehouse in Oakland. It was just like a raw, empty warehouse. When I first got there, I thought it was a cool environment. I liked the fact that it was in a warehouse. Um, I was surprised to see how much stuff they had actually gathered. So we ended up just, just going to junkyards and asking people like, hey, what are you doing with this car door? Or what are you doing with this? And then um, we just dumped it in the middle of the warehouse. And then Paul and his friends arranged everything. Me and Staba just instantly started going, but I started constructing some crazy, like, rigged up Flintstones, like, wall ramp. And it was great to see all these guys, like, I know they have no carpentry skills whatsoever. You know what I mean? All these guys, you just give them a bunch of nails, hammers, and, you know, junk, man. We were out there just, just tearing stuff up, you know? He wanted each person to take what was in the room and build an obstacle for themselves. But when we got there, that's just not how it happened. A bunch of skateboarders, man. You can't like, direct them what they're going to do. You know, we sent the proposals out to people. And he's like, is Mark Gonzalez going to show up? And I was like, you know what? He could show up. He could not show up. I go, Mark just does what he does, you know? And I was like, if he shows up, it will be like the most amazing thing in the world. When Mark Gonzalez came by, it was really great to see him skateboard. And he was off on some, some interesting stuff building. He said he wanted to build a teepee. Mark just took a piece of wood and drew on it and then rode through it, but it was so funny because he did that and everyone was like, oh! and circled him all of a sudden his photos are popping and the video camera was just like, you know what I mean? All he was riding through underneath this A, you know what I mean? But it was like, oh. fun to see things come together and like some things that were obviously really memorable were Scott Bourne and Jason Adams working on this corner thing that was just really inconceivable at the time until Scott actually pulled through the corner. Everybody working I think was was just the most memorable. It was great to see Jason Adams and Solomon Aga making things together and just goofing around having a good time. The warehouse is gone. Those obstacles are gone but that experience and what we leave there with is not gone. It was just a fun time. It just reminded me of being a kid, to be honest. Making, making janky skate spots whenever we had the opportunity. They came to Philadelphia because of Love Park and because of skateboarding in Philadelphia is huge. Philadelphia definitely has one of the biggest scenes in skateboarding, period.
Did you see that? These two are both pussies. You gotta stop moving around, alright, man? The strange and sometimes misunderstood Bam Margera. What makes him tick? And what is the essence that is Bam? Or can it even be defined? There must be some meaning behind the insanity. Oftentimes we find ourselves asking these very questions. And in the end, we dare not try to rationalize his actions and sit back in childlike glee as we watch his madness unfold. job to help me with security, not to be signing autographs. At the same I mean? time, man, my job is not to get yelled at either. I'm, I wouldn't have to yell at you if you were doing your job. Oh, I'm not doing my job? No, you're not. Skateboard Madness really was just a giant experiment at a really interesting crossroads of skateboarding because it documented a lot of aspects of skateboarding that died and it was just starting to document a lot of aspects of skateboarding that really were going to become standardized. Florida's Alan Gelfand, originator of the Ali Air. Well, rarely do you see a film that actually you can see an evolution happening within the film without even the film telling you it's happening. I knew Hal Jepsen because Hal was a really famous surf filmmaker when I was a kid. He made Cosmic Children, he made See For Yourself, and he was a really popular guy back then in the surf film genre. And don't believe, don't believe, don't believe it. The theme of Skateboard Madness, I would say, it represented a, a very heavy soul of the season. I, I need an esoteric, eclectic, uh, skate zone, safety. I, I don't know what I need. I need something outrageous. Hal was trying to find the story of that film while he was shooting the film. I want something new, and I want it now. I want something fresh and different. We got competition. And that was really the problem with the film, is the film never was able to get its niche 
because every time it would film something, something new would happen. And Hal kept chasing all these new things. I mean, like any good filmmaker, he wanted to get everything that was new, but it never stopped getting new. It's all over the place. So after a hearty burger breakfast, the guys elect to check out some inner city skaters at one of the many abandoned swimming pools that pepper the barrios of Los Angeles. It was really good for the kids, because, you know, nobody has something to do, you yeah. know, they're not on the streets all the time, just, you know, dealing with drugs and stuff like that. Something for them to get into, you know, they can work at More like a film that a skate anthropologist would like to look at and see all the different evolutionary changes that were like colliding at one time. For instance, when we first started skateboarding in pipes, it was the first time we were able to go over vertical. And what happened after uh, skateboarding in these Arizona pipes is the skateboard park started building these trough-like half pipes. They were just like a horseshoe. There was no flat bottom, and they were these long, like half tubes, and you just go right them, you know, back and forth. Most of the skate parks that were made during the 70s really were poorly made, and so many of them, in fact, almost all of them went out of business. Some ingenious kids said, I'm going to make a ramp, a skateboard ramp. So they started building these half-pipe ramps based on skateboard parks, which were, again, like these little horseshoe ramps. It wasn't until the 80s that someone realized that you have to pull the ramps apart to give them flat bottom and a chance to set up at the bottom for the other side. And then that became the standard ramp. One of the guys that's featured in the film, the skateboarder Kent Senator, his mother and stepfather financed a good portion of this film. And they decided to make this ramp called the Turning Point Ramp, which was this big plastic capsule. What that capsule was, it was a bold experiment. It was a really bold skateboarding experiment to see if guys could get upside down. And in fact, they could, but they didn't get completely upside down. They got angled upside down. But what happened was, is, is skating inside the thing was very hot and it became extremely repetitive. You could basically do a couple of kick turns and a carve. After a while, you felt like a hamster. Do you know what that capsule ended up being? At the end of the film, I believe it ended up being somebody's greenhouse. So it's back on the road and down the coast for our wayward wanderers. Mellow Cat has snapped some great shots, and things are working out rather tastily. Phil Hartman, he had a voice. We used his Gotham voice. I think it works. He even decides to pick up another hitchhiker. There were many, many cooks that worked in this kitchen that made this film. You know, I mean, Craig Stesick was involved, Paul Gross was involved, Hal Jepsen was, you know, the guy the whole time, Julian Pina was involved. All these people came and went. And as a result of it, the film has the look of many directors' fingerprints. Hey, I'm getting older. Oh, wow. What the? I must have passed through the time warp. 60 years plus. I think the value of Skateboard Madness is there's bits and nuggets for people to look back on and go, wow, that's the way people looked back then, that's the way they dressed, that's the kind of boards they rode, that's the kind of wheels they rode, that's the kind of terrain they rode. That's the bonus for looking at something like Skate Madness. It gives you a look into a past time. On almost any weekend, you'll find various madmen affecting their radical techniques. This guy at LaCosta won first prize for best face and body contact. What can I say about Stacy Peralta? An all-around performer, graceful and yet again willing to take chances. Some say he could be the most natural man on wheels. Others say he could be on goofballs. Who knows? In either case, he is an innovator and a force to be reckoned with in the future. Get up 
Basically, yeah, I've been like kind of planning to come here for like a couple years, you know, and like had my own secret spots all standing by. I don't know, I honestly don't know how this place isn't blown out. It's so good and it's like, I don't know, it's perfect. It was pretty much Diego first and then we thought of Bulala. It's like some reality show pick out, like you are good, you're good, like complete different people from each other. It's here, it's just fresh, and you just kind of show up and, and you're psyched on the spot, and that's it. Most of the spots are like, you haven't really seen them at all in uh, videos, so untouched stuff. Well, this is just like a really mellow place, you know, it's not that we went to like Paris and like skate on the city and stuff, this is just like beach down, you know? Yeah, I think taking people out of their element is a good thing. Good set of stairs. It was kind of weird because right before you go up to snap, it kind of goes uphill a little bit. So I think that's what happened to Diego. So I woke up, I had four coffees, went straight to the spot, and I just decided to go to the set of stairs first thing and just destroy my heel. Well, I think it's just bad luck though. Could have been something good, but it, it went really bad. Oh, Monte Carlo's sick. It's a bunch of like beautiful old people.
everybody been down to the love song but when i first went down there i was like damn this is crazy it was like 50 60 skaters back in the day skating love park like just skating around and i was like damn this is where it's at you know what i mean the first time i went there i got addicted Dream athlete Colt Cannon leads a fast-paced lifestyle with a schedule this hectic. Finish, shoot, you got a demo, kid. He demands a deodorant that keeps him scented properly, something that stays with him on the go, yet always leaves a refreshing and seductive smell in the air. A technically advanced right. deodorant that knows how to hold up under pressure. Colt Spice, the new topless deodorant by Crux. Favorite shoe would have to be the one. It's the one that outlasted all the other ones that had to come and Shape go. it a little more. I guess athletic with the most of the Mani got finished in the three. Go as seamless as possible. Not so much for the look, but just going basically almost for indestructible. It's there for your protection. It's not there to window shop. It's a little mixture of old and new. Now we have the G2 gel system, which is actually better impact protection than the original Air. I try not to change the way it skated which I don't think it did, I, I think I improved it. You know, I've been all over, you know, Barcelona's a tight city and, and Paris and, you know, the West Coast and the East Coast and there's all these cities all over the place, but love is so perfect and it's set up so right that, you know, you, you can't get any better than that place. The last days of love. It was like everybody knew this is it, like it's getting shut down. Yeah, just the, at the end, like everybody just got to dive bombing into the fountain left and right, you know, kids just going for the glory. be like 25 kids sitting around the gap watching like whoa whoa you know I can't believe how much shit went down at love when they knew that there was a month left I mean when Popular to switch Ollie did that was before winning switch back so when he did it I was just riding my bike by or something I don't even know what and you know, and I'm like, Fat Phil damn well knows it's illegal to skate here. Like, there's no way he's running with a generator and lights. 
Pavelardo switch ollie it in like two tries or something. I was just like, oh my god. Break this shit down. Let's get out of here. Like this is a blessing. Like there isn't a cop driving by. You know what I mean? Like a couple heads were attacking it at the ending, but you know, certain heads tried, but not too many people landed stuff. Wennings trying switch heel flips almost did it. Came so close. Switch heel flip. And he's just trying it. Landing on it, just pile out, bending his axles so bad, breaking boards. Well, I've seen a lot of people try a lot of things into the fountain. That fountain gap has taken out many of people. Flew all the way to Philly, basically just through a frontside flip to Gap. He came with like two boards, put another one together, and it warmed up, and then just went frontside flip, perfect. In a leather jacket. And then Chris Cole just waltzes in. You know, like I knew Chris Cole was good, but to waltz in there and just do the sickest trick down the love gap in the course of two days is amazing. Well done, Chris Cole, man. I was blown away when I saw that. Oh, God, one of the most insane things was Jeremy Ray. Frontside 360, I mean, nobody can frontside 360 like he does. And I guess he didn't ride away perfectly clean, but he did it. So I mean, if Love Park was still there, it would just be like, I think everything would be done down the Love Fountain, you know? It's just, it's, I'm gonna miss that, you know what I mean? Knowing what people did over the Love Gap and just everything. Well, uh, Love Park was a part of the thesis that I did at Cornell in 1932, which was a plan for the future of downtown Philadelphia. I uh, decided to make a park at the uh, downtown end of the parkway. Of course, uh, the actual design of it itself in detail, I didn't do. Uh, I was the director of the planning commission and had many duties. The design itself was done by an architect called Vincent Clayton. And uh, neither Vincent nor I, I think, would have had the slightest uh, premonition that our work would become world famous. And I think if we had tried to do something world famous, we would have met. It was probably like 87. We used to take the bus on Saturdays, get dropped off and skate all day, take the bus home. That was like one of my first experiences going to Philly. And you know, we'd wind up at Love, but Love Park really was just another, spa another spot to skate, but not, not what it turned to be. With the skateboard media confined to California, Love Park skaters didn't gain wide recognition until videographer Dan Wolf began documenting their progressive style. For sure, yeah. He's, he's from Westchester, Pennsylvania, like where Bam is from, and he would just come into Philly all the time and uh, just take trips, like filming people over at Love and stuff. Dan Wolf was just coming out with all the coverage, like from Eastern Exposures to foreign ones, everything. Dan's motivation to film was just as good as Ricky's motivation to put Philly on the map, you know? 
Wolf was there just filming every day and everybody knew about it. You know, he was one of the few people that had that eye to film a certain way and kind of edit things in a, in a more basic way that people would, you know, want to see it. You know, he was the he was the official filmer, you know what I mean? Like he could already film, but we made him so much better of a filmer by skating through the streets and stuff, and we gave him a lot of stuff to work with. Ricky would have like this line that he'd skate from Sub-Zero to Love Park every day. It was just like a perfect run that he'd take every day. And none of us really were like anybody. A lot of California people saw it and it kind of revamped a lot of people about skating. I was there the first day Stevie Williams came in and started skating. Boy, you just come in and grab random people's boards and just start skating. I mean, Stevie's definitely is born and raised here. I mean, this is this is it. This is one. He's one of the few dudes who's who's actually from Philadelphia. I feel blessed just to be here talking about it. You know what I mean? Because I'm the only one that made it out of everybody in Philly. I'm the only one from Philly, dog. I mean, he made everything from here. Whether like he did tricks over there or SF and. DC, he still was always known as Little Stevie from Philadelphia, Love Park, and you know what I mean? I mean it shows, I mean he kills ledges, kills flat ground, like kills it, he like, just flat out kills it. And you know, this isn't a bad place to learn your shit, you know? And here he is, this like new young kid killing tricks, like just learning every trick. It's like, God, how's he progressing this quick? You know, Stevie, definitely, Love Park made him who he is. And um, Josh came through and we was all chilling together. You know what I mean? Everybody was chilling together. Like, he was chilling with us. He wasn't chilling with Ricky and Matt and all of them dudes. There was two different crews though, because there was the Ricky crew which was like Matt Reason and all those guys, and and uh, and then Stevie and his crew with Jason and Rasul, and you know when Rick and those guys would go skate a certain spot, they wouldn't invite you know the young guys, and when the young guys went to skate a certain spot, they wouldn't invite the older guys, and so there was always this weird little tension. I don't know. It seemed like Love Park was segregated. It was like they had their clique and we had our clique, and it was just like. It was just always tension and beef when we should have just all got along. As tensions rose around Love Park, Josh left Philly to pursue his career, while Stevie languished in the crumbling scene and eventually quit skateboarding altogether. You know, when I left Philly, I, I was back in Michigan for a while. Uh, I lived in Dallas for a couple years, lived in San Diego and San Francisco, then Chicago, then from Chicago moved back to Philly. And you know, I, I went to Philly on a visit with my girlfriend and I saw CV on a you know, random street and I was just like, man, I'm, I gotta move back. Josh Kalis actually saved the scene because if he wouldn't have came back to Philly, it would be no Brian winning. It would be no, it would be no Stevie Williams. Stevie Williams. On 13th, 13th of Market, I'm in a subway, me and my man Boo's drinking a 40 and um, Two people walk past, or two white people walk past, whatever. I look, I'm like, damn, I look like my man Josh. I'm like, oh, fuck, whatever. Then he came back, knocked on the window, and was like, Stevie, I was like, oh shit, that's Josh. You know, 
he's, he's sitting at a, in a subway station drinking where I would have hoped to have seen him at love, you know, ripping. And, and it kind of shocked me, like, dang, you know, people are taking this place for granted, man. You, you can't do that, you know. You, if you got that much skill, you got to bring it out. You know, that's, that's how I felt. He was like, yo, I got a crib on such and such and such. I got you a key. You can live there for free. And I told Stevie, I said, look, you know, uh, if you start skating again all the time, I'll let you stay at my house rent free, you know? I'm like, yeah, right. He gave me the key right there. I was just like, you come live with me, man, and, you know, I'll, I'll make sure you got a board and shoes and and let's just go skate all the time. And, you know, he, he came back like, you know, it's on. Let's do it. And, uh... Look at him now. Rock it, rock. Rock and soul, yo. Rock and soul, Neo. For my people, this cerebral thought the needle caught. Brought on by my alter ego. A hawk like the desert eagle. We'll talk to crush. Feeble minded motherfuckers. I'll cover the glitz, cause it's not on your wrist. Give you something to twist up. Lift up and breathe in. I let Josh has built me back up, and at the same time, he built Love Park back up. To, we built it up together, you know what I mean? When I'm steady getting my elbows greasy, put on my back. With facts in it, this in reality radically left wing in my next breathing with text teasing inanimate objects with prospects and movement. Supreme, you said yourself. Who else would I represent? Why time leaving evidence? I'm conceiving ahead of it. Receiving Ian and Josh, just like that whole little like era they had right there, where it was just constant love. I want to test Mr. Three I versify your whole notions in this thing have been commercialized. Ready to dance under the pale moonlight, it's soon fire. Surface ties and merchandise theory clearly over the threshold to expose my expose. Hey, obey your thirst and simple page at first, refreshingly dope. And that'll be so good, bum rush confusion. My enterprise identifies with city skies and urban manifestos. Rolls up through the chaos to shake plots and pose visions and clothes in the globe spinning. I'm seeing beyond my satellite capture a sight that your eyes couldn't fathom. Filling up the still can spreading over your terrain, changing complexions in the section that you holding down as goes around like bad karma with mass trauma. It's 1200. Yo, who won it? Cause I'm much obliged. To give it with centrifugal forces, sources beyond the physics. My life chemistry convincingly providing what's officially fly. Straight to your chest, coming off of my mind. You know your armor no match for me. Understandably so, yo. Who wanna test the levels of diversify? Split of the earth and search beneath the where the purpose lies. Ready to dance under the pale moonlight. You soon find what you're dealing with significantly certified. Who wanna test Mr. Three I versify? Your whole notions of this thing have been commercialized. Ready to dance under the pale moonlight. You soon find. Ever since that day, Josh has helped us bring it back. Like, so now it's like so many people coming out of love. Love had the scene again. You know what I mean? Number five.
Yeah, Brian Wenning came through with just pop out to the like nose grind pop outs, just basically set that off. Everybody just started running that trick after him. And I was inspired by it. I learned a bunch of different pop out things after seeing him do it. Oh, Kalis too. God, I almost forgot to mention Kalis. He, he ripped the place for sure. Kalis just destroyed the bump the cans for, you know, that's definitely one of his claims to fame. I saw a 411 opener and Ricky ollied two cans off a of propped up tile. And I thought that that was the dopest looking thing I've ever seen on a skateboard. I told myself when I go back to Philly, man, I'm popping up them tiles and I'm skating them cans. Kerry was always good at like, going anywhere. You can take Kerry anywhere and he's always going to get something good. And uh, if he doesn't do it third try, then he'd like smash his board and throw it against things. And you didn't do it third try and you're mad about it. Like, what is the matter with you? <laughs> Observations of this non prosperous, systemically plopperous, and printed with ominous headset. While followers they call an ominously, to swallow seeds and attain the fruit with bacon boots without a grain of proof that you belong there. That's produce a mass illusion, imagine the truth in the world. Recognize what but an instance or a miss or off to be like a give a damn if I can see fresh as yours to interpret. That person had to diversify, no one is trying to serve the client. Personalized work of all the time, rather than certify, because I'm sure it sounds a person buying a person that you felt hurt by the person. First of all, my work allows a herd of death. But they're trying to assert about 30 miles off the title of the server. I only have heard this time to rest. It's hard to lie. First of all, I'm about to hurt somebody. Don't let me trust my service line. Just a word of advice for all you heard of the Keep it in motion. We flowing, moving. In unison, okay. Rolling the rumors is too explosive. Reloaded and shooting. Keep it in motion. We flowing, moving. In unison, okay. Rolling the rumors is too explosive. Reloaded. Computer components, equations are elemental like elemental P's and Q's. We stand on our diverse, kick it proper, top sir, offer these styles to the world like childbirth. We sound searching touchdown wherever the sun tries to uncloud the area west of the bay and back again. When Chi-Town in the bank in the house, which of Mike Town, Mike Town, RJ, put they lights out. Let intermission exist in the movement, personify uses the transport. We back forth like it's Wimbledon over the net. Raleigh's probably got your neck breaking, banging holes in the beaches. We need prints to ride. Man, we gigantic. They asking for your back for last crew get handled like tarantulas Get thrown over the handlebars while y'all be hanging out Inside the fair express the camouflage Waiting on Santa Claus to give you parts so y'all can hang with us Keep it in motion, we flowing, moving in unison Okay, blowing the rumors, it's too explosive They know this and shoot it The scene definitely got too hot you know, people started noticing the ledges are getting destroyed and people are getting like ran into like walking home from work and you know, at a time there was like too many people there. Everybody was going there and then they outlawed it. So then you couldn't skate there no more. See a cop, run. Cops would come in like a different way every time. Everybody looked out too, you know. If you seen somebody five zero, and just you just see like thirty kids just charging. Look out! You know, like fifteen bike cops coming in charging. 
You know, if it wasn't bike cops, it would be, you know, cops on dirt bikes jumping up the stairs. Man, motocross cops, and I'm, and I'm just like, all right, wait a second. It's illegal for us to skate here because we're quote unquote destroying this place, but this motocross bike is revving up the stairs, like chasing us. Like, what kind of damage is this doing to the place? Come on now. <laughs> I never got caught at Love Park, never. I mean, I got chased. I got chased down the middle of the street, almost got hit by cars, almost slammed in the middle of the street, just running from undercovers. I'm caught in the fucking one undercover, so like, it's kind of funny. I'm trying to like stay around so I can film that shit. But I can't get it, I don't want to get too close, I want them to grab me. There's these like random dudes dressed as bums that would just sit there and they were just undercover cops. But I mean, shit, it's right across the street from City Hall. How could you believe that you're not gonna have a problem? Everything has to come to an end sometime. You know what I mean? Look where it's at. It's a absolutely socially unacceptable thing for those paunchy councilmen to sit there in City Hall not being able to go two inches on a skateboard and say these kids can't do it when there is absolutely no reason for it whatsoever. People come to the parks to see the skateboarders for goodness sakes. Thousands of people went down and paid money to see the X Games. They came to Philadelphia because of Love Park and because of skateboarding in Philadelphia is huge. You know, so the X Games obviously saw that. They know all the popularity. That's why they tried to get it at Love Park, but the city didn't want to have that. So they let us have it at City Hall. And, you know, they invited me to go, so fuck it, I was going to be in it. It was fun for me because I know a lot of kids in this whole area wanted to come see that. And that was the fun part of that, and you can kind of overlook those other things. I think it was that you could skate Love Park for the weekend. That was it. You were allowed to go there and not get harassed. And next, right after they shut down, like cops were there, you know, arresting kids right away. That was probably the rudest thing that the city of Philadelphia or ESPN has ever done, you know. There's all these dudes skating it, and everybody's cool with it, like, yeah, woohoo! Like, even the mayor's like, yeah, and then as soon as everybody leaves, it's like, you're scratching up the ledges and this, that, and the other thing. It's like, yesterday, ESPN was scratching it up and you were clapping, you know. It's fake. It was all fake, you know what I mean? You know, here the X Games are in Philadelphia, I live here, like, this is going to help. Everything's going to help my shop love everything it's just going to be good for it second year comes around love park shut down you know what i mean we got all these angry skateboarders people wanting to leave all my friends wanting to leave the city i hated it hosting the x games generated roughly 80 million dollars for the city but despite the fame and fortune that skateboarding brought to philadelphia it failed to change attitudes at City Hall. I think it's April 26th is when it's going to be fenced off and everything. But we just, it just had to be done in order to convince us. So once that day came, it was done. It was just depressing. had a feeling about it woke up early and dropped my girlfriend off at work and just I'm gonna take a ride by love drive by and there's workers everywhere they're just they're putting up a fence around the whole place holy shit they're actually doing it like damn they're really closing this down love park just opened up to our eyes so much that we saw what we could do with it did it and then they shut us down Just after all those years of meeting up with everyone, skating, shooting photos, and filming. And you just see the park just empty. It's probably like the first time is ever, since it was, you know, ever open to the public, it was just silent. I didn't come to Love for a while afterwards to see the fence. They put like all these like, pink garbage cans and 
pink flower planters in there that now all have urine stains down the side of them. It's real attractive. They put all these hideous like wooden benches in everywhere and it's not like they really designed anything. They just kind of took a bunch of stuff and threw it in and that's how it felt. But grass in certain places they can't really hit certain things and just benches in front of certain ledges and all that. They kind of fixed tiles and stuff in some parts that were broken up where it would be kind of better but for the most part they messed it up a bit. But I mean you could still skate it if you could skate it but they have cops basically there 24-7 so it's hard. The city's stupid because like Love Park has gotten so much coverage just through skateboarding. Nothing else has covered it. People all over the world wouldn't even care about it, most of the people, you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's just a park there, you know, let's go have lunch there. But here it's in thousands of videos and magazines all over the entire world. Like, people are coming from every part of the world to go to Love Park, and it's because of skateboarding. Now you're not going to see, like, kids doing crooked grinds on ledges. Now you're going to see bums taking shits, <laughs> like, in the grass. Congratulations, well done, Mayor. Fucking idiot. <laughs> All the city council people used to say it was there for everybody to go eat lunch, but were, the only people I've seen there eating lunch were the bums eating lunch out of the garbage can. Really, it was just a, a bum mecca. And far beyond the skateboard world, it was just good for bums in general, I think. Bums are just complete hell, like people just giving birth on a ledge or just taking a shit and smearing it in their hair and stuff, like mugs of hell, fighting, whatever, trying to stab people. The same bums are there like every day, so like you become friends with them, you know what I mean? Like it became a family with these like, you know, homeless people. Cause that's what we got put in the same boat as, you know, we're criminals now. And here we are, like just these young kids hanging out in this park, which is so weird. We should be able to do whatever we want here. We made this place. We made this place alive. Honestly, we made this place worth anything. It was just fucking drug dealers. Dudes chilling up there, fighting each other all the time, every day. You know what I mean? Like, that's all it was. We came here and we gave it life. We gave it to where people could walk by and not feel scared because you got these little scrawny kids on skateboards here next to these fucking big time drug dealers. If these little kids aren't scared, why should I be scared? I'm a 30 year old man coming from work. You know, 20 or 30 skateboarders was safer than, you know, 20 or 30 ex-cons. But, uh, yeah, the skating, sure, I'm sure it's a problem for people, you know, like people trying to walk through, some kid runs into them, but that's rare, that's random, I mean, it's life stuff like that's gonna happen. But, of course, the amazing thing is that the impulse to skateboard in Love Park is so strong that they, they still go there. The layout, it's amazing how it's laid out, it's ridiculous, you know what I mean? Lines for days, and then you got granite marble. I mean, that's it. It's like one of the best places like to skate, you know what I mean? It's like skating paradise. Love Park was live. Everybody came through, it's girls walking through every day. Oh man, it was beautiful, man. The memories that I have up here, man, it's like priceless. While the fate of Love Park remains uncertain, its place in skate history is unquestioned. To further their cause, skaters and local activists banded together to fight City Hall. Yeah, so politically skateboarding was attracting a lot more attention in the city and uh, we were thinking that there's no official voice for skateboarders in the city of Philadelphia. This summer, leaders of the community formed the Skateboard Advocacy Network. Without the Skateboard Advocacy Network and the skateboarders for whom they provide a voice, there would be no movement to Free Love Park, and we would not be here today. I would like to introduce Scott Kipp, director of the Skateboard Advocacy Network. Hi, hello everyone. This is what was making people stay in this city. A lot of people here are just for Love Park and the skateboarding scene, and by destroying that, you're destroying a world-famous icon and getting rid of all these young people. If you hadn't stuck and stayed, Skateboarders have been committed, you've kept the pressure on, you haven't given in, 
And even when they said it was over, you said no. And that's what makes the difference. So we're going to go to each council person and explain why it has to be love, because there's kind of this perception. I think people in the city now realize that Philly was famous for skating, but they don't realize that it was famous specifically for love. You know, if, if love came back, uh, I would consider moving back. 100%. I mean, I'm ready. Once, once it's open, it's over. I'm going back home, baby. Sub-Zero to Love Park every day. And it's just like the perfect... There goes a the Frappuccino. Let me change batteries. Man, I'm the office. I'm the guy that changes. Oh, boy. My God, there's a fucking day and a few other guys just around. Fuck you, man. The fuck you? Well, fuck you, dude. What are you talking about? But what are you talking about? I've been like, dude, I wasn't even talking to you. You're giving me shit from like five miles away. What are you talking about, man? Like, seriously. I'll tell you what, man. There's a lot of ignorant people in this world. And I, maybe I'm one of them. But still, like, dude, I mean, you could have talked to me before you're, like, saying fuck that, fuck that from, like... Fuck shit, man. What were you... Yeah, you tell me you didn't curse. What? No, I'm telling you I didn't. All right, good for you, man. Good day. Good day, man. <laughs> well, tough shit. That's all right, man. Have a nice life. <laughs> I have doubts. But that, you know, that right there is so typical Philadelphia, and honestly, that's why I love it. I don't I mean, who the fuck that guy right there to say anything, you know what I mean? He wasn't flexing, obviously. The dude's fucking weighs twice as less than I do.
Uh, but uh, people uh, expect me now to keep going to meetings and stuff, and I'm not going to do a, another dig busted thing. I did my thing. And if it's of any value, you're the people that have to learn how to exploit it. Is there anything else you want to talk about right now? No, I'm freezing, dude. Okay. My fucking toes are freezing. <laughs>